You're muted. <laughs> this is uh, this is fairly awkward. Uh, I'm sitting here with a duck <laughs> penis, and, yeah. and we're all having a good time. Uh, welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls, the Tuesday talk show where we talk about the last three games we played and maybe something else. I have no idea, honestly. Uh, I'm doing it again where I just completely lost oh my, uh, my train of thought there. So, you know, I'm I'm brain fried lately, guys. I, I don't know about you. Uh, Carol, I know, is uh, Rob. Rob looks brain fried and Scott. Scott's always in a dark room, so I can never. Tell. Right, you need I'm always lights. In a dark room somewhere. You need lights on your face, not behind you. Yeah, I know. That's half know. the problem, I, right? I, I, you, I, I, I never you've do got that. such a gorgeous face with that white hair and with that you know, hair. I know. That I know. Kenny it, Rogers that look. Is that better? It's a little better. Ooh, that's a little bit that's better. Little bit. Okay. yourself a okay. table lamp and just. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, table lamp. Thank you. I have a little that bit more did, light over there now. That didn't actually help much. Wow. No wonder you need glasses, man. That <laughs> oh light my is God. not. <laughs> <It's so effective. laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's go around the table real quick, introduce ourselves, and then I'll say the stuff that I have to say. Mostly because I have no idea where I put that sheet of paper that has that list of things. So uh, while Scott sets himself up, Carol, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell yourself a little bit about it. Wait, what? Everybody, tell everybody a little I'm bit so about yourself. I'm so confused right now. And that's not hard <laughs> because I had a long, fun weekend. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commercial mini painter. Uh, I also play, what the hell do I play? Oh, yeah, Anja. Anja. Jaeger, Anja. Anja Jaeger on the Thursday campaign, and I played Taron in the first campaign, and I just spent the weekend playing all sort playing games and mini painting at Tolocon uh, virtual, which was a bummer because it was fun, but it was not live. So next year, hopefully, we all be back in person. All right, <laughs> Scott, you look like you're well lit. Uh, what do you well, have I'm, to say? I'm, about I'm, oh, nope, I'm a little lit. lit, but you know that's okay. Uh, hi, I'm Scott. It's yeah, Texas. Yeah, it's true. Um, I'm Scott. Um, I'm a longtime DM um, player. Um, I, I guess I'm about, about split fifty fifty right now between DMing and playing, which is a, which is a welcome um, which is a welcome change. Um, I play. Um, on the Saturday campaign, uh, on the um, uh, Calamity campaign, um, I play a, a guy named um, Rakir, a nice smarmy kiss-ass suck-up, which is fun um, to play that type of character. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's more or less what I do. Um, and uh, I play with these guys and try to try to um, try to participate as much as I can <laughs> with uh, the Murder Hobo Inc. thing. So the thing, yes, that is what I do. <laughs> and finally, Rob. Rob, tell us about yourself. What do you do? Where can we uh, find I'm you? Rob. I'm <laughs> well. You can find me on Twitter at Cthulhu Rob, or even on TikTok if you want to watch me look at people and smoke weed. Um, also, a long-term dungeon master. Got my first set in like '78 for my birthday. My dad gave it to me because a friend told him it was a game that you could tell stories with. So my dad thought that would be appropriate for me. And I think that's probably one of the greatest gifts he ever gave me. Um, anyway, I'd been in the forever DM zone for a long time before murder hobo rescued me. And now I play Dave on the calamity campaign. I'm the jock of our breakfast club, the angsty jock. <laughs> yeah. 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 That yeah. I think is appropriate uh, from what I've seen. Uh, if I were any younger, I would not get what you were talking about at all. Uh. <laughs> the rest of us all get it, though. I know it's the Breakfast Club. I'm just saying, if I were any younger, I mean, there hasn't been a Breakfast Club in a long time or any anything like it, anyway. All right. No. Well, yeah, no, disappointing. No. Uh, as the youngest member here... Um, with my good friend, I forgot her name now. Wow, that's terrible. 
I can't tell. Is it Shirley Temple? Shirley Temple. Thank you. Uh, wonderful On drinks. On the good ship. Lolly Lollipop. That's our ship. That's it's what it is. It's not Hazel's Folly. It's the good ship Lollipop. And it's going to Candyland, right? All right. You can change the name once, but no more after that. Uh, uh, we, so what? Are we changing the name? <laughs> wait, wait, is it official we changed the name of the campaign? Uh, oh, until Thursday Frank campaign. Catches on. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm Kyle. I'm the DM for the Thursday campaign, the Consolation campaign. Also, it known is as not Cthulhu Rises. Everybody dies, uh, and <laughs> that's just about the only place you can find me, other than here. Um, real quick, you can follow us on Twitch. You can follow us on Twitter. You can take a look at our archives on YouTube or on here on uh, Twitch if you uh, subscribe. Uh, if you want to shoot the shit about some D and D, you can join our. D and D uh, Discord channel. If you want to get some cool RPG gifts, shirts, phone cases, bath mats, toilet paper. Uh, the toilet paper is actually a special new thing. It has uh, Terran's <laughs> face on it. Hey! On it the other nice. end, it does actually alternate between Terran's face and one of our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. For when you roll like shit, Pirate Dog Dice. I don't know. I think Dewey's on. I think I think I'd rather have a roll of Dewey. Dewey's on the plunger. He he's the one that cleans up the mess. <laughs> is that, that's his stuck. that's his mouth. Yeah, that I guess the a, plunger's his mouth. <laughs> just shit comes out of it. It's it's terrible. <laughs> well, it sucks up the shit. I mean, yeah. Well, someone had to. Uh, <laughs> if you want to play in one of our one shots. If any of these people actually sound interesting to play with, you can contact us at Murder Hobo Inc. on Twitter or at gmail.com. We always would love some new players or to save those DMs from having to forever DM. Um, I suppose we could probably mention our next sponsor, Oddfish Games, uh, and their Adventure Sense. Ooh, oh, ah. I had a packet here and I don't know where it went. Oh, there it went. It's on there the you floor. go. Carol. I don't know, Dad. but it smells like a blooming prairie in here, mate. Ooh. I've got like I've got like the welcoming tavern. It smells all smoky and and it almost smells like food. And a few other things. It's it's spicy too. It's very good. I like I having a, it open during game time. I have one that says bombed out city. So it just sounds bombed like out smoke. City? bombed out city, yeah. Oh, otherwise known as um, oh shit, what the hell was the name of the town that we were in? <laughs> the campaign that was a bombed out city. Uh, yeah. I, I believe there's also one of those from the Sunday campaign. Yeah, I think the Sunday campaign qualifies as bombed <laughs> yeah, out city. So. Probably so. Probably so. <laughs> Well, gosh, I mean, if we're going to do that, you could also listen to those on podcasts, too. We have those mm. around there. I'm done with my list of things, so let's go ahead and get started with the uh, the Thursday Consolation Campaign. Oh, stop uh, calling it that. It is not a Consolation Campaign. I only do it to get a rise out of you. As soon as you stop, I might stop. I won't stop. <laughs> Carol, you no, go first. You won't. See that's the thing. It will. It won't be any point of of me stopping because he won't stop. Uh, won't so stop, can't stop. what the hell happened? Uh, we were on a ship. That's what happened. We started on a ship, uh, and after the big fight with the pirates, we found that the ship was taking on water. So we had to spend a good portion of that uh, bailing. Before we're here, what are you laughing at? We also used the potatoes to try and plug Oh, that was... Oh, that was, I uh, forgot about that. <laughs> Riley, okay, so Riley... Yeah, Riley thought it might be a good idea to plug the holes. There were three holes in the ship that when I investigated, realized they had been punched from the outside, uh, from the outside in, and they were about five inches apart and looked like, like you know... Probably like sharp claws or teeth or something like that made a hole, you know, just drilled a hole through. <clears throat> uh, but so, uh, how, I mean, out of game, I suspect it's the monster that dragged one of the corpses away at the end, but I don't really know. Uh, and uh, Ancha certainly doesn't know because she didn't see that. But she knows something's out in the ocean uh, that's obviously can put a hole through a ship or three holes through a ship. And yes, Ernie, Swordfish. 
or Riley rather, tried to uh, fill those holes That's with quick. potatoes, and that failed because apparently he can't make a skill check to save his life when he's on the ship. <laughs> That's because he, he's so much more comfortable in a library. Uh, and that's the thing is we did manage to get to a port where we had to pick up uh, some more provisions or something because I believe that came up at the end, the, some, the whatever the important something that our captain was picking up. Um, well, I'll get to that. Sure. So we get to the island and immediately we split the party because that's what we do on this on this stream is split the party. Uh, we so uh, Riley, our warlock, who was also into books and researching, went and found I guess was it the library. Uh, the repository, the yes, repository. essentially the library. Yeah, so we went there to do research um and the librarian there i believe it was it's like candle keep you had to bring knowledge to get knowledge so riley gave him a book i forget what the book was uh in exchange he could get whatever knowledge he you know, could in the time that he said that the what the hell was the guy's name again that was my core sarwin Okay, so light, but so he's the librarian. So the time that Light or Sarwin sat there and read the book that Ernie brought him, that book is green, huh? It is. It's great. Yes, it's <laughs> <laughs> so um, so that's what he did. He went and basically did did a lot of research, uh, in the library, and you know I don't remember what the hell he found out. That's but that's him. I just said when I'm not in the action, I don't always remember everything that's going on. Basically, I'm also trying to plot what I'm gonna do when it gets back to us. As for the rest of us, we went and we got some dinner at uh, one of the two taverns in town. It was the one further in town. Yep, you had and the cauldron and you had the dagon it in. That's right. We were at the the dagon the it in. We all picked up on, except, well, yeah, we all picked up on that, uh, that it's that, that, you know, da, actually Dagon, Dagon it in. We all no, picked it's up the fact, No, it's, yeah, whatever, it's, <laughs> it's Dagon. This whole Potato, potato. So we saw her up on the hill. There was like a religious, like a, a, some sort of a temple or a church up on top of a hill, like in this, the most probably exposed bar and it could look over the entire town. So our monk brand decided at midnight of all times, he wanted to go check it out. I'm not too sure why you wanted to go check it out at midnight, but Anch is always up for an adventure. Uh, her life pretty much has been an adventure. And she, uh, after, oh yeah, I also had a chat with, um, with Cleo, uh, where she asked hard questions, which I did not answer, about me. That was fun. Uh, aren't you like, oh yeah, I'd love role playing though. And oh, then you get no, no, asked no, no, no. hard no. questions and I'm like, all right, I'll oh, give no. you time to think about it. Let's go over to Riley. <laughs> no, 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 by the way, no, I still, no, that was that was as much in character as out of character. She, 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 Andre didn't know how to answer that. I mean, I'm like, I don't answer that, but that was as much, she, she didn't know what she wanted to say and how much she wanted to give away. So um, so basically we went up to this this church at midnight. All three of us, Cleo went along too. And as we explore, I remember there was the light. There was a light that was coming from the ocean, uh, seemingly above the surface of the ocean, not underneath it. It was stationary, but it was pointed right at us. I think I got that clarified afterwards. That it was, if we looked at it, it seemed like it was like a flashlight, you know, going in your eyes uh, from a distance. <coughs> I guess either, either, either that or it was illuminating the church. I mean, considering what the church was, that wouldn't shock me. So as we explored it further, uh, both myself and Bran have we understand deep speech. And we went and made the classic mistake of every Cthulhu uh, scenario. We went and started reading the stuff 
on the wall that was carved into the walls and and I was there a book or was there a book or was it just the walls it was just the walls it was just the walls and uh, looked at the uh looked at the murals that were carved within and it apparently i i remember the description was that the the, the carvings get more frenetic and crazy like huge monsters eating whales and things like that oh yeah all real creepy sea things and and DJ and I, or Bran and I, blew the first, um, yeah, we didn't make the first sanity check, so to speak, or uh, what the fuck are they called? Doom checks? Dread. Dread checks. We Insanity the- comes Dread at uh, it's- Droid 4. Oh, good. Then you start going Dread insane. Four. So we left off, we were at Dread 2, I think it was. The initial effect of running the fuck out of there, because that's what we did, that we had to leave. Uh, lasted only about a half hour, and then we went back to the uh, the cauldron, which is the other end. Because I was going to ask, I think I know what I was, was going to ask about the light, but didn't really get a chance to because they were rather unfriendly in there. And we found we met Ernie on the road, and we were heading back. And then we found, I believe, we ran into the captain who said, the, who was meeting with someone to pick up something important, and she met up with us and said that something important got taken away and was and we saw this figure headed right back up to the damn temple close <laughs> you rescued the drunk and passed out jeremiah oh, yeah from that's the right that's right jeremiah uh, cleo's chaperone bran overheard uh captain kenza speaking with a wild-eyed dwarf yeah, that's what uh, he was doing when I was talking to Cleo. Vin Cordo, uh, who uh, was pretty sure someone was watching him. Uh, let's see. And by the time you climbed back up the hill to the second inn, you saw Captain Kenza over the body of Vin. Oh, uh, that's as right. She Shit. Pointed out a dark figure. Making an it's, escape it's into the night. But she mentioned that he had what she needed. Correct. Like the thing we needed, or yeah. she needed. That she has yet to clue us in what it is. It's probably not good. Oh, it's fine. Gosh. Yeah, sure. Sure. At, you know what, though? That <laughs> was, it was so, so exciting. Um, I like the fact that a bit of my my character's backstory got in there and and just beginning to learn about the characters and there it's, it's an interesting group of characters I, I i enjoy i enjoy all four of them i mean you know or the other three that it's, it's yeah it was a great time and said that was it really ramped it ramped things up i was on the edge of my seat and it's only session two so that was that's i think that's a pretty that's a pretty good synopsis of what happened yeah, and hey, it, I think it's the shortest one yet. So, nah, well, I would have liked to have ended <laughs> about eight fifteen, but uh, close enough. Yeah, only three minutes after. Hey, you know, one thing I wanted to add: uh, yeah. we only ended, uh, we ended at what ten ten, so it wasn't an hour, half an hour over. Did we end it? Was it after ten? I didn't it was even. After 10. Yeah, it was like ten twelve. Oh right. right, yeah, maybe you're after. right. Shut up, Rob. It was closer to 10 10. I'm very <laughs> proud of you, Kyle. But honestly, it being a campaign, the ending time is a little more nebulous. I mean, it, it's not, it shouldn't be exact. Although, you know, to, to, we should probably get off by 10 because that's critical role time. Exactly. People and watch us I more if we end guys, at 10. Uh, I love that stuff. All right. <laughs> well, that was the Thursday campaign. I don't know uh, if Scott or Rob watched either of those and you wanted to add anything or ask any questions i think rob was highly rob entertaining in the cer- chat <laughs> rob certainly did because he was in the chat i can't remember if, wait did you oh no did you even have power scott no i was uh we were just getting back um power they were still having us you know kind of you know on and off at the time no yeah. um, so yeah. it was uh, like, they were doing this rotating thing to where we would rotate on and rotate off and Frankly, we all just kind of turned off our computers after a while, stopped charging everything. The only time I turned on my computer was to charge my cell phone. 
um, you know, because that was I was using it as a battery. Uh, I didn't want to do anything, you know, it, it was just uncertain until we had everything back. But I did watch at least, I think, the first 45 minutes of it uh, um, um, afterwards. Uh, so I did catch the YouTube archive of it. Uh, I thought it was, or, or the, the Twitch archive. It was, I saw it on Twitch. I don't know if it made it over to YouTube, but it was still on the Twitch channel. Um, yeah. Probably, I, I might be a subscriber. Maybe that's why I saw it. I don't know. But um, 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 regardless, uh, I thought it was, it was really good. And what I liked about it was the, um, I, I like the use of skill checks because whenever you're making voyages from one place to another, I like the fact that the characters had tasks and they could fail at those tasks or succeed at those tasks, thus making uh, what would normally be, a, a, you know, a move from point A to point B, very interesting and entertaining. And it allows for it allows for the uh, group to be able to learn how to interact with one another. I thought it, that was really cool. It, really amen. Good. That's so true. It really, I thought, yeah, it brought it definitely brought a lot more to the voyage itself. You know, it would. So, yeah, we could have just that, cut Kyle. right really to like it, that. man. But we yeah. didn't. I loved it. Yeah, I really like that. And I said, I'm actually playing a game, another game where we are basically. That was the whole beginning. Was you had jobs and you had to make rolls for jobs, and if you failed on that ship, there were consequences if you failed. Yeah, well, y'all just got to learn not to give Riley jobs. To it. Someone, <laughs> yeah. well, well, on that ship, it was a pirate ship, and there were painful consequences if you failed those checks for your character. So, oh. morale what is it? The beating what about them holes continue. in the ship, though. Yeah, huh? You forgot yeah. about Mazzetto uh, too. Oh, uh, well, the fact. Oh, the fact they had to ta- reattach his arm. Reattach his arm, and there's something strange going on with him. Yeah. I'm he, that something strange well, going truth on, be so. truth be told, that he's an undead construct, so he's rather strange to begin with. So that is true. It's <laughs> not really like it's not, I, and I guess with, it's okay. He came with the ship, so it's fine. there's something yeah, exa- slightly extra strange well, about this one. <laughs> the thing of it is, the thing of it is, from my character's point of view, it's probably not that strange. Kyle would know what I'm talking about, uh, and until the her backstory comes out, it's so. I mean, yeah, yeah. pieces out. Uh, I can't tell it. you. I know, I know. I can't wait to find out in game. That's the best way to do it. I love surprises. So. All right. Well, let's move <laughs> on to the next campaign, the Calamity campaign. Yeah. With oof. both Scott and Rob. Yeah. Oof was uh, exactly what I thought uh, when I watched it for the three yeah, seconds end, I did man, before I could, had to turn it off. So, uh, Scott, why don't you start us off? And then, Rob, why yeah. don't you finish it? I'll uh, I'll uh, talk uh, briefly about the parts um, that uh, that um, the party came back after a successful hunt. Um, we got back a little bit later because we were we were waylaid by a dire wolf that slowed us down. We got there, had to clean up, um, and when we arrived, we realized that uh, in our tardiness in getting back to the festivities celebrating the uh the uh, this rite of passage that uh, that we all went through that uh our <laughs> kind of little i don't want to say arch nemesis but at least our local pain in the ass doff had been spreading rumors that uh i was failing miserably and he had to save my life um and thus he <laughs> is this great you know warrior uh, and work wasn't for him, then I would have died. And of course, that kind of r- rolled me the wrong way a little bit. I was I was upset and decided that you know I needed to spread a counter rumor to his rumor. Uh, and that was great. And that, <laughs> and I was trying to think of what would a you know big burly half orc you know what what possibly would it you know come to? And I said. Well, you know, the reason he's making this rumor is because I caught him trying to bugger his own brother, and he has a very, very tiny, Daddy tiny Dick. penis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we rolled, and, and we rolled it, and it, it was true. So we had a, we had like a barmaid confirm it, saying, "You know, you ain't lying." You know, and then now it's canon. And then <laughs> Doff was, <laughs> I mean, um, um. Um, Dave was was up on the top of the you know um, table there, just hammering beer after beer after beer. So he starts making 
this, you know, just really la- large pronouncement. Ha ha, Dolph Middle Dick. Ha ha. It's just great. Dave, so, true. So that Dave was, is uh, Dave is the original Phil Bar frat boy. So it it, it it ended up having a, we ended up having a whole lot of fun with that. Uh, at, at the same time, um, our uh, our more uh, introspective and probably industrious party members, um, our our lioness um, um, Leonid and um, our our druid. Um, are out investigating and doing some things such that they are able to piece together that uh, that that Doff kind of has a thing going on with uh, with um, you know loci, um, and that was you know caught th- caught um, our druid by surprise um, very much. Um, I think I think David's playing that character, correct? But I've forgotten what his name. David's is. the Ingve. druid. Ingve. Ingve. Ingve yeah. Yeah. It was like a Ingve. Yeah, that's right. Ingve. So uh, um, Ingve, you know, you know, finds this out. Um, at the same time, um, our 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 Lina character um, is is at his house, and we have to kind of get the party together because the information that eventually gets shared is that this Doff character is about <laughs> to um, pass this other trial. Um, Right, you know this this other trial that will give him, in essence, a leadership role over us, um, which you know is absolutely a non-starter. Um, you know, because like I said, I'm I'm playing this you know type of you know smarmy little kiss ant, but he's doing it in order to you know achieve power of his own. Right? I mean, he 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 wants everyone to like him, and and he wants everyone to respect him. Uh, and you know he 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 wants to be a leader. And he wants to be seen as a leader, and he wants people to like him a lot. He wants to be senior class president. Yes, he exactly. If he can't be president, then he'll be secretary and treasurer and book club and, and don't the forget Glee Club, Glee Club, whatever it, whatever it takes. Right. So um, uh, it's the idea of being relegated. <laughs> Uh, to you know, nerd status again is just not something that that that, that he can tolerate. So uh, we, we decide to try to get the group together and go after one of these you know feathers from this really hard creature uh, before the other one does. And there are some you know things in the way. We try these nice little you know tricks to try to slow them down. Some of them are kind of misguided. Um, we're given a great gift. When we're about to head out the next morning to, I think, Greek uh, or Greg, one of the other persons, you know, who has one of these feathers. You experienced know, he, hunter. He, experienced hunter. He could have acted as our guide. And, of course, me wanting to be devious and a little bit smarmy, say, hey, why don't you go slow him down instead of, hey, come with us. <laughs> Show us where to go. <laughs> Not exactly the smartest play. But, um, you know, it all worked out good. And um, uh, we, we ended up uh, finding these, these creatures. None of us have, like, survival skills, really, um, except our ranger. But still, we all rolled terrible on our Canada investigation checks, figuring out where we were. Uh, we still were able to find these creatures. A quick battle ensued, to be honest with you. We were surprised by that, how quickly these things went down. Yeah. Uh, we were further surprised by uh, by um, um, the the fact that we seem to be closer uh, to our to our um, uh, to our rangers' um, homeland. Uh, he thought he was really really far away, but he kind of recognizes this, saying, "Hey, wait, this is this doesn't look right," you know. So now we're having some some second thoughts as to what what are the things that we've been told. I'm sure my character just can't believe the idea that 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 you know that. Uh, that, that, that he's been taken advantage of, you know, he's been such a good boy. Um, you know, why wouldn't anyone ever lie to him? Um, so that, that, that has a potential to kind of maybe send him off into, you know, who knows what, but um, it, it, we ended on a bit of a cliffhanger, which I thought was really cool. Sounds of battle in the background. I don't know, Rob, I'm, I'm sure I left some stuff out because well, uh, th- there were, th- there were, I think there was something about going up on a house and, hearing uh various sounds of well this yeah the other thing yeah there was a lot of stuff in there so yeah i mean 
I, I got to to play Dave, who does not have a drinking problem because Dave drinks. Dave mm-hmm. gets drunk. Dave does not fall down. No problem. Um, he also doesn't drop his drink, does he? No. It's, uh, does oh, not no. have a drinking problem. Not Dave has a decent dexterity and a high constitution, so <laughs> makes life better for Dave. Yeah, um, yeah there was um, Ingve, uh called an owl to go and hang That's out and watch Doff and um, Lokai. Um, Azari had spotted Doff and Lokai kind of kissing behind some bushes on his way home where mm. he went to deal with his family issues which is like tea to be spilled at a later date i'm certain on that affair um but uh, then the owl gave ingve some information that he didn't reveal to us until we were already out at our hunt but uh yeah we split out for the hunt you have that all there uh grek Maybe you should have gone with us, but as it was, I had to physically drag you away before you told him too much (laughs) (laughs) or, or spent the entire morning talking to talking Greg into stopping our (laughs) opponents. Um, But yeah, uh, that was pretty good. Uh, We saw the, we finally found the creatures after like three hours of extra looking around. Um, and uh, Dave launched a javelin at them and critted for the first time and then charged down the hill recklessly toward the creatures. And we just kind of killed them all really quickly and went, what the hell was that? I was expecting some de- decent scars. And the only scar I'm going to have is from Azari's arrow hitting me in the ass. Uh, well, no, I got one on the other cheek from one of the birds, too. So both sides felt about even. All good. Totally good. Um, yeah, and then we were packing those birdies up to go home, and we heard sounds of battle in the distance. So um, we're kind of running back, I'm guessing. Uh, like I said, I was kind of hoping for a short rest if we're going to take three hours to get home anyway. So, <laughs> Yeah, sounds like uh, a good it was- one. It was it was it was good. Uh, I enjoyed it. I got, I did get to listen. I couldn't listen to it for the weekend because of the con, but I did. Um, oh, I t- I did listen to it today, and yeah, it was it was really good. And um, I'll say this: when uh, when we 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 watch each other's campaigns, and we're all in Twitch chat. So usually, if there's you know, there's a bunch of us in there, so Twitch chat is usually pretty entertaining. Um, and a lot of fun because we'll sit there and we'll troll each other. So yeah, it's the especially only social when, life I have. Especially <laughs> when Frank Frank is the worst. I'm sure he's trolling us right now because he gets in Twitch chat when he's not on and he trolls. He sits there and just makes commentary, and it's it's fun to watch. So to me, it is more fun to watch the live shows, uh, watch it live than on um, playback. So hopefully next time we'll Agreed. see. Depending on convention schedules, painting schedules, gaming schedules. Hopefully I'll be back in Twitch chat on Saturday night for you guys. We we always like to we always like to see uh see see people on Twitch and following on the Twitch chat and and I've I, I used to be, you know, not really watch that many shows, <laughs> but um I, I've been I've been picking up a little bit more. I've I've watched a couple and uh um I was on uh and and I'm gonna have to um pick up on that more because you're right it is it is a lot more fun to be able and to it, watch on the on the twitch channels and then to be able to participate that way as well that's, can that's I ask a nice way. what you're watching which ones you're watching well i'm i'm going back right now and i'm watching a bunch of uh um one uh, games that i um mainly one shots and some of the old um, um oh hours yeah 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 hours yeah, that's... yeah i was just sure if you're watching other streams starting to watch other streams too no i i started writing you know watching some some critical role um <laughs> and 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 i like it i, I do but it's four hours, man. And I yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's, a lo- it's hard for me to find that much time, you know, where I'm just do, sitting and I can do it. It's you do have hard. to make it. You do have to make it. Like you do have to kind of dedicate a time slot to watch it. And we, yeah, yeah we do here. So we're actually like current 
but I get I get that. That's why I like our two hour, t- you know, more bite sized pieces than uh, than yeah. a full four hour thing. But but I find that the four hour ones work when I'm at work too. I listen to them at work. Um, I don't. I watch Critical Role, but I'll actually listen to some of the others out there. There's a lot of good podcasts. There's a lot of there good D&D games right now. There are there are a lot. Yeah, I, I'm I've I, I catch snippets of quite a bit, but you know, and and I and I and I will say this is that the last couple of things that I've watched from uh, from, from from our campaign and such <laughs> as that, um, they've they've been good. You know, they've really been good. I, 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 I like the little campaign bit that we have here. I like the two new campaigns that have started off. Um, they're, they're good. They're good. Uh, I, you know, I, I would put them up against anything that I've, anything else that I've seen out there as far as, uh, you know, entertainment value, you know, you know, most certainly, I don't know if we roll as well as some of the other ones do, but, uh, I... you know, we, we, we do seem to have quite a few, abject failures <laughs> I, can't, you know, I don't, I, I I don't was, know if that's just because we're more honest or or, or because no. or because we just have bad luck or the way that we the way we structure the you know d12 against me type of type of things i don't know honestly no but it does seem that no it's not quite as good it's it's not a, it's not just us i mean i've caught the well, guys I, on sunday uh, also roll terrible as well. And it's say. not just this channel, okay? Because, I mean, I was watching Band of Bravos, which is a Pathfinder 2E uh, stream. Well, it's it's ended. It was a limited uh, campaign run. And they would basically, they would they get hero points to reroll. And inevitably, they would always roll worse the second time than they did the first time. First time. So right. it's absolutely, and they wouldn't roll high enough on the first time either. So no, it is definitely not just this channel. I think dice. Okay. No, no. I if think, you're rolling lousy, it means Will Wheaton is thinking about you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's what it means. I'll keep that in mind. I would love it if you think about me. He's <laughs> we so should, cool. We should invite him on. You think he'd come on this? You never know. It's true. You never do. You never we're, we're a cool group of people. I think, you know, more people should want to come hang out with us. Well, some of us. Others, you know, talk about Pathfinders. Oh, true. shut up. <laughs> you know, Pathfinders are the coolest, man. Speaking, speaking of the cliffhanger at the end of the Calamity campaign, I think it was Get brilliantly out. done by Frank, actually. Hey. Yeah. He looked at the clock and he was like, it's coming. I can just end this right there. And it's a perfect cliffhanger. And oh, my God. Cliffhangers are excellent when they're done well, and when they're used too much, they're crap. Rob did. Yeah. Rob, Rob just that just is a nice transition. Does I tried to segue into the third campaign to see if anyone had watched, and Carol just steamrolled it with her Pathfinder. Shut up! But let's talk about <laughs> cliffhangers <laughs> instead. We've got about twenty-three minutes left. Sure. Sure. So yeah, no, uh, an important tool or uh, an annoying. Uh, Annoying habits on DMs, cliffhangers. That's what we're talking about tonight. We ended, I don't know, did we end all three on a cliffhanger? Because I think did two, a I don't know. Did, on did, the third one, right? I mean, yeah, did, yeah, I would assume that ended on a cliffhanger if that's what happened. I, I didn't see the end of that one. I caught about 23 minutes of that episode, so <laughs> didn't quite get all the way to the end. We already pretty much killed everybody at, at the GM or the GM's god or something killed the entire town then the pcs right. escaped so yeah. uh, as for whether that, that was a cliffhanger or that was uh, that ended i'm not quite sure but I'm the other two more. definitely ended on a cliff so i'll agree with that so what do you want to ask us kyle what did i want to ask you you guys yeah. are sorry you guys are dms and then there's carol uh so <laughs> I'm an occasional DM. DM. I'm an occasional occasional DM. DM. That's right. That's That's right. She is. She is. I haven't done it in over two years, man. So does that make me occasional or what? No, you were we were regular till then. (laughs) I've always just been occasional. I like playing. What can I say? Well, no, and I guess this is a question too because uh, um, because we find that our sessions become shorter and shorter. You know, they're not four hours long. And so I guess having yeah. you older GMs who uh, who have played in person more often than not, uh, um, 
What do you guys in general Four think hours. about cliffhangers? <laughs> <laughs> it used to be, and now it's not. <laughs> Uh, uh, what do you guys think about cliffhangers using them uh, were they as necessary if you have a longer session or what do you guys think in general and let's start with uh, Scott because he likes to sound his own voice and we haven't heard it in a while <laughs> yeah, we did. I do like the yeah. sound of my own voice that's correct I do um, I, I'm, I might be the odd one out here and saying in general as a DM I don't like cliffhangers <gasps> Now, 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 here's why. Um, because for two reasons. First, narratively, they're difficult to do. They're, they're just, they simply are difficult to do. When you're playing, as I, as I have, the majority of my games have been, you know, four to five hours long and in person. Everyone's tired. So it's, it's not a cliffhanger as so much as capitulation saying, look, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm hungry and I'm tired and now I want to go home. So <laughs> I don't necessarily want to be left on a cliffhanger to remind me I have to come back and play with you assholes again. So. What? Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm, and I'm just, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just we hear the truth, wow. Scott. Oh. No, 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 no. I'm 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 just exaggerating here, obviously. No, it, it's it's a thing that that after you have been playing for a while. It, it, it does get to be a little bit to where you're looking for a place to end. You're looking for a stopping point. And sometimes that stopping point, it's hard to narratively do that into a cliffhanger form. It's a lot easier to just find, okay, we're at a break. Long Either rest. A short break or a long rest, right? And so it's like, you know, instead of a cliffhanger, you're having a, you know, denouement. You're having a point where you could pause and break, and there's a break in the action. And that then seems like the logical place because people like to add up their experience points and tally up their gold and go on from there. So that's, that's why, why I'm not exactly a huge fan of the cliffhanger. Now, that being said, I'm going to say that and then I'll qualify this. The visual medium that that D and D has seen a renaissance on with Twitter and and with uh, not Twitter on Twitch, Twitch. And, and Twitch, yeah, you know, I'm showing my age. These Twitch <laughs> and, tweets and the TikToks and the Talk Docs and the Twitch all that new fangled Insta Insta, in, Insta Twit face. Yeah, Insta Twitters. So um, Twitter. <laughs> I like that. It's the twit face. I forget who said yeah, I like that. that. Someone, that, someone uh, said that. It does tend when you're in these episodic type of campaigns that go on, they're more effective, right? You have a visual medium. You have a a more I, I want to say professional presentation, and um, and you can see everyone and how they react to stuff. I I think the uh, narrative part makes it easier. Uh, um, because you know you're in an episodic campaign and, and it's going to go from one to another to another. You know it's going to be showing up again roughly same time, you know, you know same bat time, same bat channel. Okay. And um, it, it lends itself then to be able to take advantage of what the cliffhanger brings. So that's, that's my first read of that. Don't, haven't, haven't in the past not really liked them. But I can see in the uh, new median that's uh, that's um, broadcasting these games. Um, I can see their, I can see the utility. Rob, your thoughts? Um, yeah, it, if they're tried to be jammed onto the end of a long session to kind of like make it end, it it's clunky. Um, mm. I've run, I, I ran a serial campaign that was kind of based on the uh, pulp novels about the South China seas trade. And it was all set in like the 1930s kind of using a Cthulhu mythos idea. And I was bending D and D to make the characters work for a system because the Cthulhu system with combat is brutal. The oh, yes. you call it Cthulhu is just brutal. It's like, Oh, you got stuck by a pen knife. You're dead. Um, and it's going to take you 14 <laughs> weeks to recover from that broken ankle. Yeah. Um, that kind of sucked. So I did it. I, I bent D and D to kind of do the same kind of thing. Uh oh. Airplanes hopping between the islands and secret animal trade and all kinds of things like that. But I did it so that it was each session was between 
two hours and 45 minutes and three hours and 15 minutes, I would get them to a point and then break it off. Mm. And that would work. Um, yeah. But it really only worked for like 12 or 13 sessions before people were like, let's do something else with this thing. Um, otherwise, in a long table, like my games used to run five and a half to six hours a session. I would use a cliffhanger like uh, twice in a campaign arc. Not not every session. A lot of oh, sessions but... ended with long rests. Sure. No, that makes sense. And Carol, your final thoughts? Final thoughts? What? Yep, because I'm going to shirt it off now and end it early. <laughs> it's going to be a cliffhanger, folks. <laughs> uh, You're going to no. shard it off? <laughs> so, all right. So my thoughts. Okay, so... As a play, as a player, I, I like them actually as a player, uh, in spite of what Frank may think. So the only time I ever complained about being left on a cliff is when I was only get, uh, doing guest shots on the campaign, which didn't last long until I joined it. But that was that drove me nuts because I knew I wasn't coming back the next week to resolve anything. And it's that. Oh, oh yeah. You know, no that's way. the worst. But if you know you're coming back, I love, I do love a good cliffhanger. It gives me something to basically stew over and carry me through and think about until the next session, you know, and a lot of the ones in the first campaign were really exciting, exciting places to leave off and really bad for Taryn and, and company uh, to leave off too. Um, and I friggin I, I loved it. I loved it. And it said, and and yeah, I mean, I'm already excited for our next two, uh, our next Thursday session. Um, I'm already excited because of where we left off. You know, it's it's we we got we got to go track something down at this creepy place that we already friggin don't want to go to. You know, it, it's already it's, it's already been an emotional Sorry, grind. I'm supposed to cover my face when I smile. <laughs> It's oh, there's your DM screen. Yeah, but but we already, but we already, but we already. I mean, you don't have to do that. You can laugh all you want because we already know we're fucked. And I, th <laughs> I think the thing: the more screwed over that I'm, the more screwed over my PCs, the more fun I'm having. So, um, it, that's yeah. like, so that's sort of that's sort of my thought. I can understand actually. I, I, I first of all, I don't want to ever force a cliffhanger though. If it's just not in a place of the story and we're at that two hour mark, you know, just like kind of like what happened at the end of the first thing. I mean, you threw the, the monster grabbing the the corpse and that was a nice little bit. And that, that it didn't even include really the PCs. That was a nice bit for the audience to help keep them, you know, what they say, always leave them with well, with them wanting more. And to me, leaving cliffhangers off the top, that will that will accomplish it. But um but yeah, that actually leads to my next <laughs> question of, you know, was that actual a cliffhanger? And I mean, does every cliffhanger I have to directly involve the PCs? I mean, with that last one, it really wasn't for the no. PCs at all. It, to me, that's more of um, a portent of things to come rather than a cliffhanger. A cliffhanger... Foreshadowing. Cliffhanger is when literally it's like you're either mentally, life or death or mentally, emotionally, whatever, on a cliff and you're clinging on by your fingernails and, you know, or something, you know, like that. And I think we sort of do have this. It's an escalation. To me, having something pop up and grab thing, that's a nice portent of something to come. And a little bit, it's good foreshadowing, but I wouldn't call that a cliffhanger. Well, crap. It was, I'm screwed. I thought that was a cliffhanger. No, it's... To, uh, it, go it hit was, the dictionary. I'll see you guys later. Good luck running the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what, though? I thought... I still thought, though, it was a good way to end the session. It was... It, foreshadowing, I think, is another uh, device to keep, you know, to keep the narrative going and to, you know, give some people to... Something people to... Uh, something for people to look forward to to the next session. So it doesn't always have to involve the PCs. It can be something as simple as that. A little, you know, a little narration at the end of the session of something that's going on off screen. I looked really, I, I, I did appreciate that. Because I remember you did I, say- I think you're right though, actually. Never mind, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm done, that's fine. I was gonna say, I think, I, in a way that, that can be a cliffhanger because you can have the, 
to, to look at it like that serial, you can have the like protagonist sitting in the tavern and they don't know about the next shot that ends the episode where the speeding train is headed towards the tavern wall. They don't know about that, but that's still happening. And the audience knows. And in the case of a game like this, the players know, but the characters have no idea. That still makes a cliffhanger for the purpose of, you know, literary device. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm imagining a train coming <laughs> in through the wall of a tavern. Hey, hey, well, you had that chance, well, Kyle. The Roadrunner painted a tunnel on the outside okay, of the tavern. that's how it happens. I, I was, so the I was train and, and painted tracks right up head. to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it derails or or you know somebody blows it up and and a piece of it goes into the tavern. No, all you need is all you need is just paint. You just paint the rails right to the wall, paint the tunnel opening, the train will come. I thought you just pick up the rails and you just turn what? it real easy like. You can no, do no. that. No, right. You have to, you have to harken back. There was an episode that Kyle Ray and I played uh, where I blew up a train, so hence that's where that. I've not seen comes that from. episode. I don't remember that episode. You remember that episode? Don't no, lie. I think Frank remembers that episode. Oh, Come Frank on, will oh, never let it train. go. Frank will never let that episode go because I blew up his character. He died. I died, and so did he. Oh, that's why Frank remembers that. Yes, and then it's the one where David's character kind of killed him too, pulling a mimic off his face. Both Kyle run games too. I like to kill my players, and no, I doesn't. get to run a campaign where that happens now too. He's gonna drive exactly. us all. Murdered us all, and hasn't been back since. It's yeah. gonna be in. No, no, you want you're gonna drive us all insane before you're gonna drive before you're gonna kill us. Sometimes you gain insanities the normal way, and sometimes you gain it by watching your friend get eaten alive. If Someone he does it right, to he can make first. one of you go insane and kill the rest of you. <laughs> Most. Oh, that'll you know, be fun. That, but. You know, knowing my backstory, that that could happen. <laughs> if you think about it, I'm just saying, Kyle, you've We're got my email. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. I hope I want this campaign to last a long time. So I hope it doesn't happen. So uh, I guess with the difference of uh, uh, of your style of um, cliffhangers. Um, could you potentially do that at the end of every campaign? I'm asking for a friend, by the way, not me. No <laughs> I know what I'm doing. But would you guys end every episode in the campaign with a cliffhanger, just of a uh, varying uh, uh, degree of cliffhanginess? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't think so. I would do whatever, you know, where the story, I would go where the story leads. If it happens to end on a cliffhanger, then I'll do it, but I'm not going to force it. I, I want the story to still be told in as organic a way as possible. So, no, I don't think I would do it on every session. I feel like Scott's going to agree with you on that one. He's muted. He is also so, muted. So we'll never know what he's going to Yeah, so sorry about that. No, I, I would I would agree with that, that I, I, I wouldn't end every episode on the cliffhanger, even if I could, even if I had a uh, reason to it, because the reason, or even if it was narratively easy, and th there, there are two quick reasons. Um, the first reason is that the reason you use a cliffhanger is to ratchet up suspense. That, that That's, as a narrative tool, that's what it is. It's supposed to add suspense and mystery and, you know, the, what's going to happen next? You know, that's the question, what's going to happen next? and you add suspense um, to that type of thing and you ratchet up the, the level of suspense to keep your viewers or keep your audience glued to the next one for that resolution. Um, and so that's, that's, the, that's the reason you do it. But if you keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it, your audience will become in essence, you know. Um, oh, what's that a show? where they keep asking the questions but never answer them. Yeah. They're on Which, the island. Lost? Lost. Lost. Yeah. Lost. 
So, so, so the point is, is that, you know, you almost grow a little bit immune to it, you know, to its, to its effects. And second of all is that's the first reason is that your viewers will grow immune to the, to the ratcheting up the suspense. But the second uh, reason is that's a I'm a big point. believer in, you know, a narrative arc, right? A story needs to have natural points to where you're building suspense to where you have, you know, you, there, there, you, the, the, the hero's journey, the all, there's all these classic ways that people tell literary tales and there are natural points to where you're building suspense. There's natural points where you're developing characters. There's natural points to where you're pausing, you're learning lessons, you're doing this, you're doing that. You have your climax, you have your denouement, you have all these different things that you have. So just, just from the storytelling point of it, I think a story is much more effective if you're not constantly in the, the building suspense phase. And that, that to me is a point of, of, a, of an arc. It's a point uh, that you need to do during your storytelling, um, but it's not every single time. So those are the two reasons. Your audience gets immune, and I believe in using narrative arcs the way that they were constructed because I'm an old fuddy-duddy and get the fuck off my lawn. <laughs> I agree with you, by the way, on that point, too, that, yeah, if overuse, probably, that's a good point, Cal. Don't overuse it. Yeah, well, that leads to the next question, which I was going to have Rob answer first, which is, does the genre that you're playing in necessitate? Necessitate? There we go. Yay! Yeah, I Great can speak question. words. That is the Hoosier uh, 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 school uh, system right there for you. Um <laughs> Uh, uh, meth and corn. That's 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 all we learned. Uh, uh, but does the genre uh, possibly necessitate? Ne oh shit! Why did I, I should have tried to reword the dang question. <laughs> um, does the genre necessitate having uh, amped up uh, uh, um, uh, suspense at the end of every episode, and maybe necessarily at the very beginning of your next one? you relieve that that way you can exactly build up not necessarily a staircase but rather a mountaintop uh or a sine wave yeah good or a sine wave, thank you yeah uh i've, I've heard of those um s-i-g-n <laughs> no uh sorry but rob i'll let you be a little bit more intellectual uh what um, do you think about that question well it genre can definitely Oh, no. But it... no, don't go. All right, I've got there we go. no go. All right, you got uh, it. You got it. You're back. You're back. Okay. Um, yeah, it was. It was. I ran a game that way that was set in a serial realm, and we had a cliffhanger every episode by design. And at the beginning of the next episode, you resolved that situation in a role play environment. And then you got your experience point level up, which I'd already talked to them about. And so they were able to move their characters up because that was how that campaign was designed. But it got tired, even though it was designed that way. We had 15 episodes planned. I think we did 13. Mm -hmm. um, and that just ended it because even that got tired. So that's what I'm saying. Done in a limited realm. Yeah, it's great. In the Western setting, it works really well. In that pulpy Call of Cthulhu setting, it works really well limited campaign arc if you're looking at a longer arc i like to have those waves spread out a lot more so like i say in a campaign looking at like maybe there's two kind of cliffhanger points in the somewhere towards like a third of the way in you have to have a conflict point that seems like it's really big to the characters and then they get past that and they got to move on to the next conflict which is really really big and then there'll be the final one at the end that's got to be your like your long campaign needs like a three step arc where there's three big conflicts that evolve the characters through their life progression. Um, other than that, in if you're doing an episodic where what I basically did was wrote 15 one shots that were stitched together because they all featured the same characters in the same setting, but they were progressing by a level each one shot. Hmm. Okay, it's interesting. All right. I agree with that. And I would say if there's one genre, if there's one area that, that well, I would say two, that really lend themselves to cliffhanger type things, it's going to be Call of Cthulhu 
and probably the uh, domain of dread, uh, you know, Strahd. Those, your gothic horror, they're just steeped in suspense, you know, so you're almost expecting it. So in those two areas, that type of gothic horror area, whether or not you're running Cthulhu or whether or not you're running Curse of Strahd or one of the, the things like that, those two environs, those two genres, I think, lend themselves towards yeah. the, the suspense building type stuff more than straight up adventuring. And I think that part of that is just because straight up adventuring, you got to rest. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's, right. that's such an ingrained mechanic. Yep. All right, then. I guess we will go around the table for some final thoughts on cliffhangers. Uh, here is the question. What is either the best cliffhanger, what's the biggest cliffy you've ever had? Or given someone. Uh, but before you do that, I'll give you some time to think about it as I go through our usual things. Uh, you can follow us here on Twitch. Uh, we're just about to end the show. We're not going to end it yet until we get all these people's questions. You can follow us on Twitter. You can check out our YouTube archive. Or if you subscribe to Twitch, you can follow that archive. Uh, if you want to talk some more D&D, talk about cliffhangers, uh, uh, maybe tell us about your Raging Cliffies. You can talk to us on our Discord channel. Other than that, buy some cool RPG Chef on our store somewhere on this page right over there, I think. Yes, right over there. Uh, most importantly, if you want to play or participate in our talk show, we have better topics, I promise. Uh, uh, and the games are always great when we do run a run shot. You can talk to us on Twitter or you can contact us at mhoboinc at gmail. Uh, finally, thanks to our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you're rolling like shit. Pirate Dog Dice, unless you happen to know the creator, then she'll make you a dice called Big Red. It's weighted to <laughs> always roll 20s and no, to kill players. It doesn't. it doesn't. It didn't. He Frank could have killed us at the end of the campaign with that die, and he didn't. He certainly tried. Uh, and finally, <laughs> Oddfish Games and their Adventure Sense. Uh, get ready for, uh, gosh, what was it? Terran's Fence Post? No, what was it? Typhoid Fence Post? I don't remember. I They're going to come out with a new scent. I promise you that, It guys. wasn't Terran. Well, wait, that did you see a, name of Terran? I don't know. It was your Cacophony Player's uh, uh, name. <laughs> uh, but then also the Shine Project. When you have questions that you want to ask or you just need a little bit of help working on that story, working on that campaign, try out the Shine Project. It's a nice little uh, little system there to really get the brain thinking about some, some gooey, yeasty thoughts uh, if you're doing a Cthulhu campaign. Uh, and finally, uh, we want to thank D, our artist for both campaigns. Yay. She's drawn up a picture of, of Rob, of Scott, of David, of Carol, of Bran, and all those people. And some of them look really awesome. Uh, then there's Carol's character. But that's that's Mine more of a off. design flaw on her part, what? not on our artist D. You know, she had oh. limited things to work with. She Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. But no, since no, no, I'm no. picking ignore on him. Carol, ignore let's him. go with Carol. Your biggest cliffy, or the biggest cliffy you've given someone? That sounds so wrong. I don't know. I've had so. I mean, I've been playing for over a long time, like a lot of these guys here. So honestly, I, I you know, I'll, I'll go with, I'll go with the recent memory, which is I think the biggest cliff. Oh, geez, that is that's tough, because, especially with Frank. He had so many cliffhangers. Um, that were left me friggin' excited. Uh, I'd say I, to me, my favorite one of the campaign was when we went into when we went into the city, and they were um, oh, we saw the human torches. We saw them doing the two human torches right at the end of the episode, and I'm like, that's where you're gonna leave us off right there. That human was human torches were good. That was one of, to me, that was one of the, I mean, I don't know about the biggest, but that was one of the best cliffhangers right there. But I mean, there was several, I mean, the end of the fight with Taryn's sister where we had, we were, we had the Bushmills company come and drag us all off. That was a good one too. But I've said, I've had a lot of good cliffhangers over 30 years. So, I mean, I'll just go with a couple that 
or recent memory. Okay. Rob, why don't you dust off your cliffy and uh, tell us about yours? I, I think that the best cliffhanger I've ever experienced was one that somebody uh, did in a campaign that I was a player in. I was playing my uh, Grod Son of Dor original barbarian. And um, we were in a pretty sword and sandals environment. Uh, there was a, a good bit of sorcery, but it was still kind of almost like our Bronze Age campaign. <laughs> Um, and he cliffhangered us by transitioning us to Spelljammer. Oh my um, God! Oh, the the Whoa. the demons, the demons that took over the temple, <laughs> turned out to be freaking aliens with a giant sh- spaceship from the far realms. <laughs> yes, it was, and we had no freaking idea. Wow. None. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's, and oh he transitioned our campaign into Spelljammer, and we took to the freaking flog- Flogiston and sailed to other worlds. And I couldn't even. Wow. I don't think I could ever top that. Yeah. Scott Guerin was his name. And Holy wherever you are, Scott, sh- I remember that and Arrow in My Ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott, you got to top it. I, I don't I don't think I can. Um, That's unreal. I think I think it's the, while I was DMing one time, I put a Shagoth in the uh, expedition to the Barrier Peaks. I I think oh. that going into the fourth level of the ship in the little the little garden section, they overlooked the little garden area, and and then there's this this you know, Shagoth, bubbling eyes and stuff like that. And then I end the episode or I end the uh, session there and they're all oh, trying to bring up, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know, I'd be was... throwing things at you. Like, How dare you end it well, right now? No, no. See, the thing is, is that, you know, because I was going from, um, you know, the old original, you know, deities and demigods that still had the Cthulhu myths. Yeah. And I remember a friend of mine, Jim, told me see he lied to me right he told me and said that you know there was you know like yog sothoth and all these you know cthulhu myths were actually in in the module you know so in the module expedition to the barrier peaks that's actually those monsters are in the that 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 module so i went out and bought that module okay and thinking that there's going to be cthulhu myths inside the module now, there's that little frog-looking character with the weird freaking little things. There are veggie pigmies, a lot of weird shit in there, no doubt. There's a chicken with one eye. But there were no, <laughs> there were no Cthulhu we myths in there. So I decided to put them and demigods. Yeah. We had to wait until deities and demigods. Right, right. So I coveted that book for so long before I could buy it. I know, I know. Well, I had to go back and buy it again. I've gone back and bought all my old ones that I'd thrown away and stuff nice. like I haven't that. done that so yet. I have them all again. Yeah. yeah. So, I anyway. still have them all. I, and, and that wasn't so much uh I don't know if it was a if it was a cliffhanger as much as it was just a straight up curveball. You know, it's not something it was that they had already seen lasers, but you know, I hadn't seen any Cthulhu stuff before. So why not? Lasers, one eyed chickens. Why not? Why not a Chagall? Why not? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think I have three Shagaths in the uh, next uh, campaign that's going to happen. Uh... <laughs> anyway, stay tuned, guys. Can you make tuned, that guys. sound again, uh... Carol? I didn't clip that. <laughs> Sorry. I, I can't. I don't think I can re- replicate that. <laughs> so, guys, uh, we're going to end the show tonight <laughs> here uh, uh, right after I tell you my cliffhanger. Uh, but there is a game on Thursday, Cacophony. There's Friday. There's Saturday for a Friday, convention. Saturday, Saturday. And, of course, the Tri-Generational Sunday campaign. Uh, so keep an eye on that. They all start at 8 Most o'clock uh, Eastern time. Uh, but anyway, so the biggest cliffhanger that I had was uh, starting this cam. Oh, my God. Look at the time. You know what? I'll tell you guys about it later. <laughs> uh, everyone must just wait. Say good night. Bye. Bye. He good doesn't night. have one. Good night. Very good. Wait.